Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about the Speed Tree middleware. Now this one is actually pretty essential to the game development world, and strangely enough, I've never really talked about it. The only time I talked about Speed Tree recently uh, was back in July when Unity acquired their creator IDV, or Interactive uh, Data Visualization. Obviously they did that to pick up Speed Tree. Now Speed Tree is all about creating trees and uh, <coughs> uh, for your games. So if you need bushes, shrubs, that kind of stuff, and obviously trees with multiple level of details that will scale across many pieces of hardware. That is what Speed Tree is all about. So I uh, will come back to Speed Tree in just a second, but first I'm going to start off with a bit of a demonstration. So this here is Speed Tree. Uh, you can start from a simple uh, template. So you see you got a number of options here, uh, broadleaf, cluster, conifer, you can create grasses, uh, palm trees, uh, these plants, stumps, and vines, or you can load stuff in. So I'll show you from a conifer tree first off, and here you can see the interface. It uses sort of a, a node network, sort of familiar to if you're from the Houdini world, uh, to create the trees. You can edit any one of these things. So I could come in here, I could pick the base tree itself right here. So let's go to the tree, and then you see here you can control uh, the generators, the shapes, the LODs, and the collisions of this particular tree. And everything you can just come in here and handle with basic sliders. So here we've got uh, radius settings for it. Uh, now I can come back here, and let's say we'll start with the trunk. So I'm going to come here and select the trunk aspect, like right, so. And the same deal. I can come in here, I can select generators for it. Uh, we can change some values out there. Obviously, that made things a little bit weird. Uh, jumble, sweep, roll, so on and so forth. You can do splits in it. Um, and then you've got also control over uh, the spine that goes together to generate things. Uh, you can do things on a node-by-node -node basis. Again, all the typical sliders to handle things. Uh, you've also got a couple of other options for drawing things. And one of them I, I can't really showcase because for some reason, uh, the freehand stuff, like things like bending, yeah, it works just fine. So I can come in here and we can bend the tree. But unfortunately, one of the new features here is the hand drawing. And when I do this, I get an error on my install that I am missing a uh, key lock. Ooh, did it actually work this time or am I not in the right mode? It seems to be working. Okay, maybe this will actually work this time. Um, come on, shift space, shift space. Come on, draw. Oh, well. Anyways, uh, you got control over all of the various different aspects that go together to create a tree. Here you can see, obviously, you've got the twigs that go together here. And then in this case, the frond, or if you're dealing with um, another kind of tree, like an oak tree, it would be the leaves at this point in time. Uh, you can set up how the uh, texturing works on all of these things. So let's go here, pick the frond right here. So you can come in here, for example, go to material, and you can pick out the material type to be used. I can come in here, for example, and go to this a conifer style tree, leaves, and I pick a needle type, and it'll swap out accordingly. Now this is my work. It's pretty terrible. So let's go look at some of their new stuff here, some of the demos that come with it. So you come in here, you can see a uh, number of samples are available. And one of the new features is trees from photogrammetry. So here is an oak tree that was scanned using photogrammetry. And let's go ahead and open that guy up. So you can see the kind of stuff that Speed Tree can create. In the end, you're also going to create all your game development related things in here. You can create, again, multiple levels of details. You can create collision objects. We can also go ahead and add forces and wind in here. So I'm going to do wind as a global thing using the wind wizard. So we come in here and I can pick the uh, what kind of tree you're dealing with here. So yeah, it's a stately shade tree. Sure works for me. Uh, wind, wind generator. Uh, so conditions, we go stormy, calm, breezy, or whatever. We're going to go stormy, of course, because we can. Uh, you got control over all the various different things that are available there. And we'll go ahead and set that up. So you can see the wind here. You've got control over the direction of the wind using this little uh, widget right here and you can see how it interacts with your object in the scene. So this tool is literally all about creating trees, shrubs, bushes, that kind of stuff for your game. And then when you're ultimately ready, come on up here. You can basically export it out to your game. And here you're seeing it's available. We've got exporters for um, Unity, Unreal Engine, Lumberyard, Speed Trees, SDK themselves. So if you want to incorporate this into your own custom game engine or an engine that isn't necessarily supported, you can also export out to FBX. That gives you... Um, well, that would be loadable, obviously, in um, 3D Studios Max, Maya, uh, 
the Blender importer for FBX is getting better and better every day. Cinema 4D, etc. If you want static trees out, uh, no animations, you can bring it out with Wavefront Object. You've got support for USD format, which is gaining a whole lot of traction. That's Pixar's kind of universal interchange format. Or you can dump it out as raw XML. So if you wanted to do your own importer or whatever, you can do at that point as well. Uh, you've got post-processing things like ambient occlusion in here. So you can have it calculate that for your model. Again, you do collisions. Uh, you can add various different forces into the world, like say a magnet or planner forces, whichever. And that is in a nutshell speech. Now there is a ton more to it than what I'm showcasing. I'm not really that particularly competent in this program. Uh, so I'm not gonna do much more of a demonstration, but if you wanna go ahead and check this out, we will see in just a second, there are uh, free versions that you can check out. And we'll also look at the licensing uh, actually right now. So here we go, speech tree. Again, it's all about modeling uh, vegetation uh, and also for integrating it into a variety of different game engines. As you can see here, it is used by a number of pretty popular um, companies out there, Activision, CD Projekt Red. Uh, it's also used in the cinema world more and more. So you see here there are cinema licenses available as well. It seems like all of these middleware tools are moving into the uh, that space as well. Uh, let me go back though, because I don't actually want to be in the cinema space. What you're probably interested in more is the games licensing. Uh, we can go back up here though, and let's check out what is new. In Oops in Cinema 9. So they just released Cinema 9. Uh, they got, again, photogrammetry conversion. This is getting more and more popular. Basically, this is when you uh, take hundreds and hundreds of images of real world um, subjects, such as obviously trees, uh, and then you can scan them using something like a LiDAR device, or it just basically uses photogrammetry to just calculate from all the various different angles. It recreates a 3D point cloud for you and the textures that go with it. And they now have tools for handling that. Uh, we have the free and creation tools. These unfortunately don't seem to work properly for me. Uh, but as you can see, you can pretty much uh, paint the trees using their tools, bend them, shape them, and so on. Um, we've got uh, models for every biome. Another neat thing I didn't showcase here is actually we've got seasons here as well. So you can see here I can control. So we come here summer and we go autumn, the leaves change, winter, the leaves actually fall. Uh, you can have the leaves show up on the ground or not show up on the ground. So you've got some really cool features and functionality in that regard as well. So you've got dynamic models built for every biome. Uh, there is a library of plants. They've also got their own library that you can buy additional plants from. Basically it's their own asset store. Um, obviously performance oriented. So here we go into the licensing details. So there is a free version available for learning. It uh, doesn't have the SDK, does not have the library add-on. That is the one I'm looking at right now. It also seems to be a little bit on the bug side in terms of their new freehand drawing tools. Uh, there is an indie version available as well. Let me go to the more of the details here so you can see some of the details here. Uh, so it is internet access required in that particular case and you need to make under 100K a year for to qualify for that pricing. Otherwise you need to jump up to the pro at 300 bucks and in that particular case uh, it is node block or floating licensing options and then if you get into the custom stuff uh, there is uh, if you have to ask uh, pricing tier available here as well and that is what you need to get the SDK so those are the multiple different tiers here so if you're using it in an indie game where you've made less than 100k a year in the past uh, it's $19 a month otherwise you're jumping up to $300 uh, not per month just uh, outright. I don't like this plus sign thrown at the end of the pricing, uh, but that is the uh, pricing for Speedtree. You also find Speedtree is often integrated into other game engines. For example, the Lumberyard game engine had Speedtree integrated and they had their own custom licensing thing worked out. So you didn't have to pay anything additional, I believe anyways. Uh, so you may be able to find Speedtree implementation in your game engine in under a slightly different licensing scheme. Uh, but if you want to integrate it on your own or you wish to use it directly and export out to uh, a modeling tool, or something. These are the terms you're working with. Again, there are add-ons for the most major game engines out there. Uh, so this is the version you saw in action. You can download it for Windows, Linux, and Mac. So every major platform is covered, which is actually kind of nice. Uh, interestingly enough, though, you cannot download it if you make over a million dollars a year. So even with the limitations that you can't use it commercially, if you make more than a million dollars a year, you're not allowed to trial using this version either. But I got a feeling for a lot of you, uh, that's not going to be a limitation we need to worry about all that much. So yeah, uh, they were acquired by Unity back in July. Nothing really major has changed in that regard. Um, they're um, still available for all the game engines. The pricing hasn't, structure, hasn't changed in structure or amount or anything to that effect. Uh, and again, this is a program that's been around probably 20 plus years, been used in hundreds of games, uh, 
you know, AAA titles you heard of. I believe Witcher 3 actually used to be a tree, and Witcher 3 has some of the best looking trees out there. Um, so again, if you are looking specifically for a uh, vegetation engine for your game, Speed Tree is sort of the brand. Uh, obviously, I, I did a story uh, a couple weeks ago about how. Um, uh, Mega Scans, uh, Quixel uh, is implementing their own tree library, uh, but they're still pretty early on. It'd be interesting to see if that turns into a competitor or not. Plus, you can also find tons of Speed Tree uh, kind of equivalents on the Unity Asset Store and the Unreal Engine Asset Store, but Speed Tree is the big name there for sure. And they did just release Speed Tree 9. Again, with this new freehand engine, which unfortunately I can't see, and proto, uh, photogrammetry conversion, which is probably the big deal there because more and more realistic content creation is being done using photogrammetry methods. So that is obviously a big feature there. So anyways, that is Speedtree and Speedtree 9. Uh, let me know what you think. Comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.